So we, uh, the educators and the MOEs, uh, educators decided to focus on more than subjects. So more new subjects came in. All right. Um, children who are interested in taking different paths, it's all opened up. That was a good shift. Then 2020 came and we were hit by COVID. Suddenly, everything became technology. Everything had to be integrated with technology. Children had to learn quickly, even us. We had to learn quickly how to adapt to the new changes. And a lot of focus in the education system um, was towards collaborative learning. So this shift recognized the importance of teamwork and cooperative learning. Children were being quickly coached to learn uh, collaborative learning strategies, which encourage them to work together, to discuss in their team and to solve problems and then go to present it to the class. So in order to thrive in this new learning environment, children were coached and expected to have effective communication and interpersonal skills. So that was a new learning for the children. Now, if we look at 2024 and what's beyond 2024, we can see a lot of focus, a lot of emphasis. People are moving away from knowledge acquisitions and moving towards competency in skills, even in the workforce. If you notice, there's a lot more going on and uh, the emphasis is now on competencies. So this shift recognizes that in the modern world, it is not just about what you know that matters now, but also how you apply it is very important. As a result, there is now a greater focus on teaching critical thinking skills, problem solving skills. These are all skills that are transferable in any uh, environment, whether it's in primary school, secondary school, future, you know, tertiary education, or even in the children's future working life, right? So these are transferable skills, but we understand that these skills cannot be learned overnight. So we are looking at something called laying a strong foundation in Sarada itself. So with a three-hour program, we will have a lot of difficulties to cope with all these changes and to make sure our children are resilient enough to go out into the world. We need to do more. That's what we realized. And if you look around in the education, the preschool education scene right now, everybody's moving towards childcare, longer hours. Um, there's a lot of child minding. But what about the focus on the child's education or teaching the children about uh, skills that they need to have in order to survive in the outside world. We feel there is a gap in that. And that's why we came up with this six-hour program, which is very much different from the childcare setting. We are still a kindergarten. We will still be a kindergarten, but we are trying to make the kindergarten a better kindergarten with our solid curriculum. So um, moving on, so we realized that the environmental and societal needs have changed rapidly. And this is not going to stop. This will continue to change. And it is us, we have to keep in pace. So the responsibility, the accountability is on us, the parents, the, the educators. What can we do for our children now to get them future ready? So we're going to talk about the um, extended curriculum now, all right? I'll give you an overview of what's being done in the six-hour program. If you look at um, our core curriculum and our extended curriculum, it's like a spiral approach. It was a lot of hard work, but we have kind of blended, or we say a, a, a rather a smooth transition from the three-hour program to the six-hour program. We are not teaching in, in silos. That means you do uh, English, math, uh, discovery of the world, and then the other three hours, uh, you do uh, mother tongue, art, music. No. What we are doing is we're trying to integrate what the children learn in the core curriculum, because our core curriculum is still a very good curriculum. We're not going to give up on that. 
we take our current curriculum and see there were many opportunities to do more in-depth studies, more in-depth um, uh, learning for the children, which we couldn't do in the three-hour program. So then we have to you know, take stock of the children's uh, developmental stage at the point of time, and we top up. That's the, the extended curriculum. We top up from a very strong core curriculum and then move forward. So if you look at the components of our, yes, thank you, the focus areas, because the focus areas of our extended program, it's not just subjects. We are focusing on the learning dispositions and we are focusing on three new components that we're going to introduce for the six hour program. So um, the teachers will share a little bit more on the components. I'd like to talk just a little bit about learning dispositions and why these are important. Now, when we say learning dispositions, we are talking about habits of mind and personal qualities that will influence how children engage with learning. Learning dispositions make you ready to learn. You can sometimes, you know, you at home, you can do the same thing. You can keep teaching your child uh, one plus one is two and then uh, spell, spell this, spell that, give homework. But if we are not teaching our children the learning dispositions, then they will never learn to learn for themselves. They will always be dependent on someone else, always giving them all the skills, all the knowledge and just memorize it and deliver it. So learning dispositions are crucial because they lay the groundwork for how children will learn throughout their lives. So these traits not only impacts their academic success, but also contributes to the personal development and future readiness. So we talk about learning dispositions. What are the learning dispositions you may ask? So in Sarada, we have six learning dispositions which we very carefully crafted after interacting with children and finding out what is important, what is relevant today and beyond today, what is going to be relevant. So we came up with this six uh, learning dispositions, perseverance, reflective thinking, perspective thinking, critical thinking, making connections and engagement. So just to give you a little info on, on what this means. Perseverance is the ability to keep trying even when something is difficult or challenging. Do you have situations where you know you give a child to do something and the child says, no, I cannot do, I don't want to do, or they break down and they cry. So in Sarada, we want to overcome this challenge. We want to teach children not to give up easily and to see mistakes or challenges as opportunities to learn and improve. So we pay more attention to it in our six-hour program. Reflective thinking. Reflective thinking involves looking back on your learning experiences, considering what happened and thinking about why it happened. So you must connect it, right? So it helps children to learn from their actions and make better decisions in their future. Perspective thinking or perspective taking, it's a little high order if you say, but our children have shown the ability that they can always put themselves in another person's shoes. Um, so it is the ability to understand and consider other people's thoughts, feelings, and points of view. You must be in a collaborative setting, huh? in the learning. You must be able to take your team member's point of view into consideration. You can't say, you can't shut it out and you can't say only my ideas need to be presented. As a team, you need to accept or if you're going to not accept the team member's uh, point of view, you need to articulate and tell why it may not work. So we do that in our K2 uh, level, six hour program. Uh, we find that when children take perspective taking seriously, it promotes empathy in them and enhances their social interactions. 
they become better at how they communicate with their friends, uh, how they solve problems. Critical thinking also plays a very important part in our curriculum. Uh, it is involves analyzing information, uh, questioning some assumptions that we put up to the children, and the children will evaluate based on their findings to make informed decisions. This happens a lot during their project work, which we will share with you later on. So it helps children to become independent learners and problem solvers. Making connection is a higher order. Making connection is the ability to link new information to existing knowledge or experience. So that's why you say we don't teach in silos. Whatever we teach, we give children the time in the six hour program to reconnect to what they have learned and then they say, oh, yes, the other time we learned like that. So is that why this is happening now? So they make the connections. So it helps deepen understanding and retention of concepts. Lastly, the engagement. Engagement is not just being able to sit down and complete the work. We are talking about full engagement. It refers to the active involvement and enthusiasm in wanting to learn. When children are fully engaged, they are motivated to learn and, and explore. They take the ownership of learning. So you don't have to keep harping and say, do this, do this next. After this, I want you to do this. The children know in order to reach the goal, I have to do all these steps and get to the end point. So this is what we nurture in Sarada in the six-hour program. Apart from this, we also focus on the three new components. We have STEAM, which is a inquiry approach to project work. We have KTL. It's actually key to logic, key to learning, sorry, key to learning. Um, it's a, a specially designed program, customized program that focuses a lot on children's logical reasoning. That's why it's called KTL logic. And like I said, we are not only focused on our children's academic success, we are also very mindful that our children should have uh, be resilient in, in their future um, uh, endeavors. So they need to calm themselves down. They need to know what they what are their strengths and what they can do better. So we are focusing a little more on brain gym. These are exercises that promotes the overall well-being of the child. So these three new components are the ones that we, we uh, kind of do a lot more in the six-hour program. So to talk about the different components, the STEAM, the KTL, and the brain gym, we have teacher Sulo, um, who's our senior teacher and currently taking a K2 six-hour class. And uh, we have uh, our vice principal, Ms. Kala, who's overseeing brain gym. So uh, these ladies will share with you um, a little bit what of, of what is currently happening. Because last year when we presented this to the uh, K1 parents, like last year K1 parents, we could only tell them this is what we want to do. We and not sure whether we can carry out. This year, we have the data. We have the evidence and our children are showing us that they are thriving in the six-hour program. So we are using their examples to explain to you how the six-hour program is going. So uh, teacher Sulo will take over and explain about STEAM and KTL. Thank you, Mrs. Uma. Next, let me share more about the STEAM lessons. It comes under the umbrella of inquiry, creating experiences and opportunities for children to learn about the world through the STEAM lenses. So what happens in the STEAM lessons? There are teacher-child conversations, wonderings, experiments, discussions, for example, the topic on real world problems. Benefits of STEAM approach is, the, this approach helps to enhance the vocabulary, critical thinking, and problem solving skills in the children. Children also get opportunities to communicate and make connections and do reflections on the STEAM topics they are working on. Next. 
Not long ago, the six-hour program just completed their first STEAM project on pulley system. Moving on. During this STEAM lesson, children were engaged in various hands-on activities and had many opportunities for self-explorations. Um, we started out by reading a book called How Do You Lift a Lion on Simple Machine was used to harness the curiosity of the children. Children also found out through their own exploration how the pulley system in the weighing scale works. As children started asking questions about weight and gravity, simple experiments were done for them uh, to make connections and draw conclusions. As you can see from this slide, the children did their own parachute uh, to explore and apply the theory that they learned on gravity. So to further enhance their learning, they went on a field trip to the Singapore Science Centre to look at the different exhibits related to the pulley system. After their field trip, children started to work in their groups to brainstorm ideas and engineer their own pulley system. The objective of this activity was to develop an awareness of their immediate environment, share their prior knowledge, listen, respond, and communicate to questions, and most importantly, to work cooperatively with their peers. So to wrap up the STEAM lesson, children tested out their pulley and made further discoveries as they progressed, and they also reflected on their entire project. So through group discussions, they shared, what were their new learning? What could have been done differently? What were their challenges? Moving on, during this STEAM lesson on pulley, children had the opportunity to exercise science, where the children used their process skills to do observations and explorations through books and articles on the topic they are working on, for in this case, the pulley system, technology, they used digital tools, saw informative video clips to gather more information about the topic on pulley, engineering, when they constructed their own pulley system using recycled materials, art, when they had to design their pulley system, and maths, of course, when they had made predictions and learned to read the measurements reflected on the weighing scale while planning for their pulley model, they also applied the distance, the space, and they used the measuring to use the, sorry, the ruler to measure to construct the actual structure. And moving on, in Sarada's dispositions are also incorporated through these STEAM lessons. For example, the perseverance persevere through a challenging task, like conducting multiple trials of an experiment. When they are, there's a failure, they retry it again. And the reliability and to understand the variations in the outcomes. Critical thinking. Demonstrate critical thinking by identifying patterns, asking insightful and probing questions, articulating their reasoning, why they did what they did, and recognizing cause and effect relationships. Making connections, relate STEAM concepts to real world applications. For example, while they were learning about pulleys, right, the children made connections, how AV materials are lifted up using pulley to streamline the process and reduce the amount of physical effort. Engagement, fully engaged and remain focused throughout the activities. Reflection, reflect on their experiences and talk about what they have learned. Moving on. Not let, uh, now let me uh, just share uh, about the interesting, another interesting program that is the KTL. In short, uh, we, I mean, in long, we call it key to learning and the logic module. KT Health is a Vygotskian program that focuses on developing children's cognitive learning abilities. In the K2 six hour program, children will have the logic program one hour once a week. The program offers a distinctive approach to the introduction of two basic logical process, that is classification and seriation. The children will learn to see invisible attributes of objects and events and use their logical thinking to analyze and problem solve. Moving on, um, let me share one of the session we did with the children, titled, Which is the Fastest? In this lesson, children had to arrange the vehicles according to their speed from their left to right, and they share their reasons 
why they have arranged it in such a way. Teacher engages them with questions which require them to think, observe, and answer. And the question varies from simple to complex. So for example, teacher might ask, which is the fastest vehicle of all? Which vehicle is third from the left? Which vehicle is faster than dash, but slower than the other? Moving on, the same activity is then upscale uh, to challenge further the children. Children learn to represent the speed of different vehicles using strips of paper. After arranging, they will answer questions using the strips and the picture cards. Subsequently, the picture cards are removed and children are expected to remember which strip represents which vehicle speed and answer questions accordingly. Teachers might ask questions like, how did you do it? Why did you do it this way? And what is the difference between A answer and B answer? So it is very interesting and amazing to see all the different answers coming out from the children as they use their logical thinking and their reasons are valid. Moving on. Why we chose this program? Because KTL is where the children's critical thinking capacity improves significantly. They can engage in uh, matter cognition and make connections to their learning. They learn to integrate knowledge into their existing ideas or thoughts and create new learning for themselves. Reflective thinking. Children will learn to ask questions, to clarify their thoughts. They will also learn to articulate and communicate their strategy to others. This helps them to become effective communicators. Now, I'll share pass the time to Ms. Kala, who will share with you about the brain gym. Ms. Kala. Thank you, Teacher Salo. Good morning, parents. Nice to see all of you on a Saturday morning. And I will be sharing with you uh, more about brain gym. A brain gym is one of the key components of the extended curriculum. So what is brain gym? As what the slide says, brain gym is a training and body movement program that enhances the whole brain. Um, some of you may be thinking, why do brain gym? So when we wanted when we wanted to kickstart the extended curriculum, we had a curriculum team um, studying different programs to see which program will suit our children. And at the back of our head, we were very focused that as much as we want children to develop academically, we also wanted to focus on the holistic, the well-being of every child. So we did study brain gym, and according to brain gym, the re many research and studies shows that brain gym exercises helps children to connect the body and the brain, stimulating the brain, improving the physical coordination, and strengthening the cognitive functions. When we talk about cognitive functions, it is about memory, the ability to think, the ability to make connections. So what is brain gym comprised of? It's actually a set of 26 exercises which involves simple movements and exercises like cross lateral exercises where one side of the body crosses the midline to coordinate with the other side. These exercises range from simple to complex. Moving on, I would like to show you some photographs uh, of our children uh, in the current K2 uh, extended children from the extended curriculum program. They are doing brain gym. So these are some of their pictures. Um, knowing and understanding the goodness of brain gym in Sarada Kindergarten, we have introduced brain gym to all our children from nursery to the K2s. However, in the K2 extended program, it has been done. It's been, we've been doing it um, a bit more extensively as teachers work with children every day, spending about 15 to 20 minutes to do brain gym at the beginning of the day. This routine actually um, helps children to calm down and keep the children active, energetic, focused, attentive, calm and engaged for the long day ahead. And these exercises also improve the children's posture, concentration, coordination, thinking, short term memory and learning. So what you see on the right picture is an exercise that children are doing. It call, it's called the hookup. And on the left, you, what you can see is children are doing crisscross exercises standing. In the next slide, in the next slide, you, you see them doing crisscross exercises as well. But this time, they're sitting down and doing, you know, and it also a bit of stretching helps the body to stretch. And then on the 
right my right hand side yeah um you're doing coming down before you're going back to the class to start the day so in sarada kindergarten we strongly believe that introducing brain gym to our children it supports children to develop the above learning dispositions that mrs uma explained earlier aida next slide move on aida yes thank you earlier slide aida yeah so um yeah brain gym helps children to develop this learning dispositions which is perseverance making connections and engagement as children continuously practice brain gym routine we see an improvement in children's self regulation and they are able to better focus in class and demonstrate greater perseverance when tackling challenges in the classroom and they also start showing improved ability to process thoughts quickly and make connections more effectively so overall we think that brain gym is an effective way to reboot our children's nervous system and help them reintegrate the mind and the body so we are very confident that brain gym will help our children to excel so with that i'll pass my time over to mrs uma back mrs uma over to you thank you kala so i hope i mean we have just given you an overview of uh, the three components um steam ktl and brain gym So these are exclusively done for the K two children on a consistent basis. Um, like what Kala said, the brain gym though we have introduced to our three hour program children, um, due to the uh, curriculum time we cannot focus that much because we need to cover so much of the curriculum and so uh, brain gym sometimes done only for the three hour program on Tuesdays and and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Fridays when we have our workouts, so we try to incorporate during that time. Um, whereas the the uh, six hour program children, uh, when they come in, they every morning they start off with this routine, the brain gym. So in the beginning, we saw children having some difficulty of of moving their bodies. You know, in the morning, just like us, we we our body is not cooperating with us. so uh, it's very stiff and difficult to bend and be flexible but we have done this for one whole term and now is second term and we're almost coming to the end of second term we can see a remarkable significant change in the way the children are doing the brain gym they are more confident focused and things that were a bit difficult like the criss cross that kala said uh in the beginning it was difficult to reach to your left and and to your right now they can do it with much ease so it shows that when you do something consistently every day children pick up things faster and, and we're not sure i mean we have not done research to to find out whether does this uh, brain gym how does it have a direct impact on um the learning all we do is we do a research based on global studies but maybe in future our team might want to do a research on this but the thing is right now we can see how children were in term 1 january and how children are now in may and we can see a difference the difference is not so much like you know uh you grade them you know you say uh, okay he's it's like a 50% better in in english uh, 20% better in math when we look at them holistically they are always cheerful they are they are happy to come to school even in the 6 hour program i would see them smiling full of energy sometimes they're so worried thinking that you know in, in during january we're thinking that uh, hey, what happens um after 3 4 hours they want to sleep um they get tired we should make some kind of provisions we can't have mattresses and 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 pillows but Uh, maybe we look for a room where it's a bit more cozy and they can lie down so we even went around looking for uh, the libraries at the top uh, the second floor and thinking how we can convert that place to a sleeping area if the child needs to rest and though we set up everything we bought our cushions our covers and and, and pillows not one single child wanted to sleep they didn't want to sleep and they could always like we want to do more we want to do more 
the teachers were getting tired because for six hours, they're continuously teaching. And then we realized that the kids got full of energy and they get absorbed things so fast, but they don't feel like they're being stressed out. That was a beauty to see. They don't feel that they're being stressed, they're being forced, and they are enjoying the company of their friends and the teachers. And the way they started to interact with the teachers, even with me, was amazing. Um, they learned to speak up. And in kids being kids, sometimes they see, say the wrong things. But then the other friends will say, oh, you say something wrong. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, I'll correct myself. So it's, it's, it's very beautiful to see young children, six-year-olds, learning so many things that we, at our age, only learned in, in primary school or in secondary schools. So um, brain gym could have influenced positively in the way they behave and they cope with the six-hour uh, program. So that's why we, when we look at the benefits for children, we find that there's more space out time for in-depth exploration and comprehension of challenging concepts and skills. So we don't just cover um, the, 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 what do you call, prescribed curriculum for early childhood. Um, we go beyond. When we say we go beyond, we are not looking at P1 curriculum. We don't want to overteach and bring the P1 curriculum to K2 curriculum. And then when they go to P1, they'll get bored. So we are looking at beyond that, what do children need to make them confident you, they, and they can use the language better and thus thrive in a changing environment. So what we did was uh, some things I want to share, which we didn't get the slides for. Uh, apart from the three components, we did a lot of extension activities in language uh, mother tongue language and um, uh, English language. Because in Singapore, to effectively communicate with another person, we use English a lot. And if you're talking about public speaking and um, speaking in front of a group, your language, your oracy skill must be very strong. So we started teaching children how to be better in their oracy skills. Um, we also started now using idioms, teaching children that there's this thing called figurative speech, which we can use it. These phrases that do not mean the actual thing and how you can use them in your daily conversations with your mom, dad, with your friends. And, and we kept it very little, not just, it, just four per week, maybe the children's too much, but the way the children are absorbing the knowledge and applying it in their daily lives says that we have underestimated them. We can even push further, do more things for these children. And this is what we want for our children, especially our Indian children, to survive and thrive in a, a very competitive Singapore environment. So we also giving a lot of opportunities to practice social skills, such as cooperation, empathy, and conflict resolution. So now when there's a problem in the class, and um, child A is not happy with child's B action, uh, the teacher will tell child A, so what can we do about it? How can we tell child B what he's doing is not right? We have the time to slow down. If we slow down, we are giving the child, a child the time to think about it and then to respond, right? Um, we are also, uh, one another critical benefit for, of the six-hour program is preparing them for the rigor of primary school. Um, we are trying to adjust more smoothly to meet the demands of formal schooling um, so that children, when they go to primary school, it's not a shock. Oh, I've got longer hours in primary school now. Uh, would I be able to cope with the curriculum? I hear got a lot of homework. I hear got a lot of things. So we are trying to make it more enjoyable now that regardless of what environment we put our children in, in they will be able to thrive. So that is our main goal. Um, a little thing that I, I couldn't share here today is mother tongue. Uh, mother tongue in Tamil and in Hindi, uh, children get more time for mother tongue activities. Um, just in three hour program, let's say if you've got uh, four periods to five periods, 
uh, in six hour program, they get about seven periods. So it doesn't mean more time means you also teach more, but we wanted to see in-depth learning. What else can we do that other schools are not doing, but it'll be beneficial for our children. That was our focus. What can we do that will help them? So we decided that we wanted to focus a little more on culture, especially our Indian culture and traditions. Because we are so caught up in our modern world that um, sometimes we forget our traditions and what the past had um, offered us. So we sat down with the mother tongue team, um, Hindi and Tamil teachers, and we crafted um, one hour lessons on just on traditions, uh, on culture, uh, games that have been forgotten, um, you know, uh, clothing, uh, famous people that we have not heard, maybe the younger children will not have heard about them. We bring them back to life and we want children to enjoy and understand how rich the Indian culture is and not to forget that. So maybe, even though I couldn't share here, um, during the open house in July, uh, when you do come down and see your current K1 classes, um, do spend some time going up to the second level and look at the six-hour program classes, what they are going to uh, uh, share and uh, what they've done so far. Because then it's more space, more time. Uh, we can put up more things to show that what we have done. So uh, Open House is happening, I think, in July, uh, fifth week. Uh, it's a Saturday. So when you come down, do go up and see the six-hour program as well. Okay, so um, moving on. So our core curriculum is still, I will emphasize again, that our core curriculum is a very good curriculum, but we can do much more with the extended curriculum. And like that's how you see in the uh, picture, the spiral approach. Uh, what children learn at the beginning and what they learn at the end, they slowly, it's, everything is linked and integrated. They learn slowly with, at their own pace, and have lots of fun when they're actually learning. And we believe that this strong curriculum makes your child future ready. Um, before we move on to the other section, I was, we were hoping that um, our parent, one of our parents could join us. Uh, ladies, uh, has the parent joined us? Do they have? Okay, so can we introduce the parent? I think we have Mitran's mom. Yes. Okay. Good uh, morning, Principal yes. Hi, good morning. Sorry about the confusion because no we, we, uh, we last minute we had to call uh, the parent and <laughs> between the husband and wife, they had to make a <laughs> shift as well. Thank you, um, Mitran's mom, for joining us today. Yes. Uh, please share with us your child's um, uh, journey in a six-hour program. Sure. First, uh, thanks, uh, Principal Uma and all the teachers uh, for really giving us an opportunity to come down and share our experiences with the other parents. Uh, dear K1 uh, parents, good morning, everyone. Just this time last year, uh, myself and my husband, uh, we were in the same shoes as you when we were hearing the uh, talk by principal and vice principal about the pilot uh, six-hour program for our son's uh, K1 batch moving on to K2. Uh, so I'll just like to honestly just share with you the experiences and also how our son Mitran has journeyed along uh, his K2 year this year. Yeah. Um, so when we first heard about this um, pilot, uh, we, we were excited because there was going to be an enhanced curriculum. And I think Principal Uma brought, brought you through the enhanced curriculum. And um, we were particularly interested about um, him spending time in school, uh, having an opportunity to build relationships and uh, really get to practice his social skills. So we were looking forward to it. And um, we were also looking forward to the um, better transition to primary one um, because he will be going to primary one next year. Uh, we did have some apprehension. I think the main apprehension was whether our son could transition to this new change because, you know, nursery, kindergarten one, uh, he has a certain routine. So that was our main apprehension. Uh, what are we going to do on the home front uh, to make that transition helpful for him uh, so that he can get the benefits from the six-hour program, okay? Um, so how has it been? Uh, the first 
couple of weeks, right? Um, because from three hours where he used to come back home and then have his lunch and nap, now he has his lunch in school and then his nap is a little bit later. So for the first couple of weeks, yes. So we, we asked him, we know we asked him how was it? And he was like, uh, you know, Amma, Appa, I'm a bit tired, you know, but I'm enjoying school, you know, I get to do this and that and so on. So it was that that was the main um concern that we had was how we are going to uh, adjust his routine. So after about a month, uh, he was actually all, all settled in his new routine. Um, but what helped us was that um, we kept very close communication with the school teachers. Uh, so we would ask, you know, what, what are some of the observations that, that we see with Mitran in the school so that we could adjust on the home front, you know how we can make sure that he gets be better rest and he's more ready uh, and energetic for school so that he can participate in all the activities. Uh, so that really, really helped. So honestly, after the first month, about four weeks, right, uh, he got into the groove, groove of it, okay? So that transition uh, was very, very useful. So that was our main fear, right? So that was settled, okay, after the first month. Um, but what we observed was on really how much he has grown in this um like now it's me, right? So in this four months that he has been in the six-hour program, uh, because there is a six-hour program, I think that gives the school the flexibility of time to put in a lot of activities uh, that perhaps the three-hour program naturally will have some of its limitations, right? So um, actually right now, this weekend, we are preparing for his bridge building project. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, I mean, just to share with you, because I think they have got this project work element, uh, inquiry-based, right, um, that they he, he comes back and says that he has this bridge pl uh, planning. Every group is doing a different bridge. He told me, I'm, uh, and one group is doing a cantilever bridge. I've never heard that word before. So my husband and I had to Google, and then we were amazed of the kind of exposure that he was getting in terms of the vocabulary he's using. So they're divided into groups. They get a chance to do collaborative work, uh, which I think just, just before this, when Principal Uma was mentioning about um, getting ready for primary one, uh, I think this, these opportunities really matter. Like how is he going to exist in a group? How is he going to talk to his friends? How is he going to listen to other people's ideas and not just push his idea through? Um, so we are happy that he gets these opportunities together with the standard curriculum. So now he talks about group work. So I think now it's a bridge building. Earlier on in the year, he built a pulley system. Uh, so it has become a part of his um, vocab that, oh, you know, these are my group members. Each one of us have to bring our own items to school, giving him a bit of responsibility. Uh, I think these are some of the things that we really see as benefits of the program that far surpass the initial um, transition, you know, teething issues, changing of routine and whatnot. Um, so we, we see that in our son, Mitran, um, and also socializing because now he got a little bit more time with his friends, right? We start to hear a little bit more about his friends, the relationships that he has built. Um, it was very nice because previously, and uh, Suri and K1, I think because the time is just three hours, up, sat down, you're gone, you know? So the relationships, you can't really go very deep. But now we went for the um, parent uh, family day the other day. And, you know, it was so nice because Mitran was like, oh, this is my friend. And then we interacted with the parents there. And uh, because of these relationships, and I think it will help him a lot uh, in terms of his uh, social skills, emotional skills that um, we are seeing. So uh, when Principal Omar invited us to come down to share, uh, my husband and I, we just thought we'll give you that honest um, picture, but really that we are very happy uh, to have uh, embarked on this decision because we made a choice. Uh, we had a choice at that time, either to come for the six hour program or stay on in the three hour program. Uh, but we definitely um, see this as a positive. Uh, the success factor was that uh, the school keep asking for feedback. I think within the first three weeks, they already asked for feedback. So we gave feedback about the food, the resting, the outdoor activities. And um, I think they collated everybody's feedback. And I think what the school did was see what is feasible, what could actually be implemented now, uh, what cannot, of course, definitely cannot, uh, you know. And I think that that really uh, helped us. Uh, we gave feedback about everything, every every issue, and they were willing to hear it openly. So um, I just want to say rest assured, 
uh, I'm sure you all will have the same uh, journey, but if there's any questions, uh, yeah, feel free to, to ask. Is that all right, um, Principal Omar? Oh, yes, that's, that's wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing. Um, it, it, I, I see Mitten has grown as well. Uh, like you say, social skills has really improved to such an extent that you can have conversations with him, you know? And yes. it's like talking to another adult, but the things that he says really makes you want to laugh. He's become a bit more humorous. Yeah. And he knows that he's being humorous. That's the best part. So uh, having conversations is wonderful it's in the daffodil class. Uh, I really enjoy my time whenever I go in to just uh, check in on them. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Mitra and Mark, for sharing today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, Aida, what is next? Q&A? No, let's do the uh, challenges that we have. Uh, in any program, we have challenges. All right. So um, in, like what Mitra and Mark said, uh, in the beginning, uh, before they came on board, we already told them this key challenge, school transport. It's going to be a problem, a headache. Until today, right? That is three hours, six hours, I still have a problem with school transport. But um, six-hour program, um, we all have more issues because we do not have that many buses or, or, or vans going to different areas. So um, our transportation will be very limited and um, probably to these areas, Sengkang, Pongol, Haugang, Tampani, Simei. As of now, I'm talking about in 2024 and predicting maybe to early 2025, this is the only two-way transport that we can perhaps provide for six-hour program children. Um, so what happens to the children who do not reside in these areas? Um, still, you can express your interest in uh, at the end of the um, talk, um, let then I have to do some homework with the uh, operator and see if it's feasible. If it's feasible to go for a two-way transport, is it feasible to maybe do a one-way transport? Or if there's no transport, then we'll be very transparent and tell you, you know, we don't have transport. If you take a six-hour program, we don't have transport. So it's your decision to continue without transport or you stick to the three hour program, right? So that needs a lot of work on. Other challenges that we saw in the beginning was food. Um, because now that they're six hour program, they will have their morning snack and they will have lunch. So after talking to the parents, we have a better idea of what the children um, dietary uh, needs are. So we changed. They prefer meals. So in, in the morning snack, it's usually uh, the normal snack that they're having right now. The, um, uh, the bread, the, uh, and we have other sunshine wholemeal breads coming in now. Uh, we do pastas, uh, string hoppers, idiopums, itli. So the current menu that you see. Um, and then for the six-hour lunch, uh, we cater separately for them. So six-hour children will then have meals. When you say meals, it's like um, uh, rice with uh, dal or soup, or some gravy will be there, and vegetables. Okay, uh, we're still vegetarian, so it's, it's vegetables. So, and now we learn that our children can eat vegetables, actually, no? Even though in nursery K1, they say they cannot eat, teacher are warm meat. Uh, I cannot, uh, parents say, don't, don't give uh, 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 meals to my children. They cannot take vegetables. You'll be very surprised how your children can eat vegetables in the six-hour program without us even forcing the children to eat. So it's the way that we cook it, perhaps, or the caterers cook it. So um, we do that, and sometimes they'll think, that, oh, today, once in a while, we give them... Um, what do you call uh, the nasi bri uh, biryani? So we give them biryani, rice, and then we give them um, appam, papadams, and then a gravy and some vegetable. And they'll say, oh, are we having a feast today? Today's the bestest lunch you have provided. So <laughs> we understand our children, uh, you know, uh, palate taste. And then we know, okay, this is what they like. This is what they can eat. 
too much of that is not good, we reduce. So it's constant adjustment, but we think we are getting there. And the portioning itself, now we don't mix everything up. We give a three compartment kind of um, plate and then we get children to take what they can eat. So it's how much rice you want, you take. How much gravy, some would not like too much gravy, spicy maybe, then you take less gravy. See how much vegetables you need and you take. We give a lot of uh, decisions, we leave it to the children to decide so that they are happy. You know, they won't cry about snack time and lunch time. They are eager to look at it and they want to enjoy that social time with their friends. And the six hour program children also have uh, fruit three times a week. Uh, in three hour program, we have once a week. Uh, in the six hour program, they have it three times a week. They will have lunch and then they will have fruits. So once a week, uh, parents will provide the fruits and the other two days, uh, school will provide the fruits. So that's meal. So we had some challenges with meals and then we kind of uh, rectified that. And then um, activities, yes. So six hour program, also we need to tailor our activities such that there's time for rest. There's busy time, quiet time and rest time. We cannot do one activity and after another because they get very tired and our weather is very humid. So what we decided was that usually the first half of the day is the busy period. That's what we call it. Um, where they have the, the experiments, going out to explore, going on field trips, um, exercises, uh, outdoors, gym lessons. That's all being done uh, in the beginning, uh, maybe first half of the day. And slowly after lunch, we kind of slow down. We do slow down our curriculum so that children now be able to relax a little more because after lunch, you do feel a bit tired. So we slow down and we introduce this new concept of uh, learning centers where it's not the three-hour kind of learning, uh, three-hour program learning centers. It's a different kind of learning centers. Uh, these learning centers are done to stimulate cognitive thinking in children and they're all challenges, all right? So what happens is that children are free to go and choose which basket of um, uh, learning center they would like to work on for that day and they are brought to a quieter area. They sit there and they work on what they want to work on. It's a very quiet time. So usually they get that about one hour. So it's enough to do their own challenges and they feel very you know, uh, confident that they're able to do this and it's so fun. It's very fun working on the learning centers. So that's how that also the change that we brought after hearing feedback from parents, you know, when they come back very tired. And so we changed that as well. So now morning is a little busy, afternoon is a little bit light, but the learning continues throughout. Um, and then there was another issue, uh, not issue. Um, field trip has always been an issue for us in the three-hour program. There are many places that we want to go, but we are not able to go because of timing or the place will open later. Then the morning session children would not get a chance to go. So um, I'm very happy to even announce that the six-hour program children do enjoy, get themselves really immersed in field trips. And it's just not one field trip. Whenever it's possible, we also bring in another field trip that is related to their project work. So um, like what teacher Sulo said, term one for police, they went to science center. It's unimaginable going to science center in the three hour program. By the time you reach there, it's time to come back. So uh, six hour program, they have time to have their breakfast, talk a little bit about where they're going, and then they set off for the uh, field trip. They spend a good one hour or one and a half hours. We can now, uh, you know, book for, um, facilitated tours. In the, in the past, we couldn't because of the timing. So in the six-hour program, we can book um, where the experts can facilitate the uh, groups and they learn better in that setting, no rush. And then they come back to school and they are able to transfer their learning and apply it in our local context here. So that was good. And uh, the, this year, K2 children, we also um, started a new initiative, um, a collaboration with um, Teacher Silo, is it NTUC Silvercare? Am I getting it right? 
Yeah, NT now they changed from Silver Circle, they changed to NTUC Elder Care Center. Oh, okay. NTUC Elder Care Center. Uh, this is a collaboration that we have started with. Uh, we also realized that uh, our children need to be exposed to other people, especially like what Mitten Mother said, relationships are very important to us, whether it's with parents or with grandparents. We think our young children must be coached or exposed to care for someone else, especially the elderly. Soon we all be in the category where we need our children to take care of us. But the thing is, can they show empathy? Can they care for the elderly? So we started this collaboration um, with the NTUC Elder Care. And we're very happy that we could bring our children over um, and the children engage with the elderly people. And, and uh, they kind of um, did a lot of interactive activities with them. You know, they played with the people with the elderly and they found that they could teach the elderly how to do some games and when they came back there are a lot of sharing to do oh teacher i taught the old people this i taught them this and that and when we checked with the parents parents were saying this is the best field trip that you could ever uh, arrange because my child really now understands that caring for someone else is very important so we started that and we will continue to do this collaboration for the next three years at least so the K2 six hour program children will get to go for the uh, additional field trip, uh, no with no additional cost, but they just get to go for the field trips. Okay, so um, Ida, what's next after this? The fee structure, yes, very important. Um, how is the six hour program fee structure going to be like? It's already in the in the website, and there are no changes from uh, this year. K2 six hour program and next year K2 six hour program is the same because we want to keep it um, at a rate where parents are also comfortable and so we are not increasing the fees. So if a child, if you choose to put your child in a K2 program next year, these are the fees you're looking at. Uh, the three hour program is $396 monthly versus the K2 six hour program is $745 monthly. Right. Uh, if you're pay paying by term, it's one thousand one hundred ninety per term, and for the six hour program, it's two thousand two hundred thirty five dollars. Term, uh, so there's four terms in a year, right? So we're looking at four terms a year. Other things that we charge, uh, we want to be very transparent with you. This is already existing in your termly fees, um, but it's not. I think it's it's doable. It's a material fees we call it. Uh, this includes the books that we are going to uh, that your children are using, uh, the files, the homework, uh, the worksheets, the the um, art materials that they are using in school. Um, seventeen fifty for the three hour program per term, and thirty dollars for the six hour program. And in the six hour program, uh, when we say art materials, the children do embark on special art program where they they get to talk about or they focus more on one particular artist for that uh, week or for three weeks in a, in a row. And then they will do a, a replica, replica of or inspired by the artist, they will do an artwork at the end. So this one costs a little more um, money and, it, and we need to quit source out for the materials. So that's why it's $30 per term. So this fee structure uh, is there on the website as well. We will also give you the slides, uh, whatever that's possible to share. We will give you all these figures and we will post it again um, via our portal. So you can get to go through the slides at your own time. Okay, uh, what's next, Aida? Q&A? Okay, you can start typing. I see that you are typing in your uh, questions. There are 100 people here right now. So it's easier for you to type than we look for the hands and then unmute. So if it's, is it possible for parents to ask questions? And then we can answer. I think the teachers are answering. Teachers, you are and Kala, you're free to answer those that I uh, missed for now. This is one, uh, this one uh, the first question about transport, you want to address that? Uh, 
Sengkang, Punggol areas have two-way transport or? Ah, uh, have, have. Sengkang, Punggol, Haugang, Tampines, Simei, I think, Simei. Uh, Serangoon probably, but I'm not, not that many parents come from Serangoon, but uh, this area, we do have two-way transport because currently we have children coming in the morning and afternoon sessions. So that's why the operator can still provide the two-way transport to these areas. Meal timings, like what you just said, 9.30 and 12.30. It's half an hour, so 9.30 to 10 in the morning and 12.30 to 1 in the afternoon. May I know the start time and end time? It's 9 to 3. So sorry, yes. It's 9 to 3 Six hour program. But program starts at nine o'clock. But your child has to be in school by 8:30, 8 8:40. Uh, because we still have to do health check. Assembly still has to go on. Just like in primary school, no, you have to come a bit earlier for morning assemblies, routines. And we are very serious about the health check because uh children do come in with runny nose, um, blisters and all stuff. So we need to make sure we have enough time to thoroughly check the children. So um, it's a requirement to take temperature every morning as well. So it takes a longer time because there's so many children coming in bus buses. So uh, 8.30, 8.40, they should be here. But they leave on time. 3 o'clock, the latest 3.05, 3.10, they will leave. So the exact time is there. 9.30 and 12 12.30. All right. Can I know school timings? Okay. Uh, Yishun, I, I doubt, I really doubt there's two-way uh, transport for Yishun because, uh, and it's not easy to travel from Yishun to school in the mornings. Uh, we are also looking at the journey time, you see. If your child has to travel for more than one hour, we're trying to cap it at one hour journey. If your child has to travel for one and a half hours and then come for a six-hour program, and then usually returning back is about early, it's earlier because traffic is not so bad. But you can imagine the child uh, coming for such a long ride in the morning. So we do not encourage and therefore um, we do not practice that. And I don't want the kids to go through that. So we will not be able to provide uh, two-way transport to certain areas in the morning. What is the earliest date Budok Reservoir have? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure. I, I'm really not sure because... Um, I need to look at the, uh, what do you call, the schedule and the routes. And I need to talk to the operator. But please indicate your interest later on when uh, the QR code is given that you are looking for two-way transport. There are questions there, two-way, one-way, uh, personal transport. So you, you tick accordingly and answer accordingly. And then I, and like I said, I have to work with the operators. My admin will also work with me together to see what is the best possible solution for children who fall out of the two-way transport areas. Earliest date to register for six-hour program for 2025. Earliest date is today. <laughs> Later on, we will release the, the QR code. You can indicate your interest and straight away, if you, you know, if your requirements is all met, your transport is all done, you fall into the, those areas, uh, we will respond to you via email um, that, Yes, we are able to uh, take your child in for six-hour program. And then we will say, this is the fee. Uh, yes, we can provide you with a transport for two ways. Um, and then uh, other details, whatever details that we can think of, we will put it in there so you have a better picture. And then what happens is that you need to register. Um, you see, last year, when we did this expression of interest, we gave parents um, until about two, three weeks, and then we close the registration. Um, we were hoping to get just one class and just do the six-hour program. But there was overwhelming response. And we did we had to do a lot of configuration because we need to get teachers to uh, be redeployed to certain uh, classes. So, uh, so right now, we have two classes who are doing six-hour program. So when we do that, logistics get changed. Buses get to be rerouted and stuff like that. So we need your response 
and your confirmation. That will be a letter sent to you on confirmation. So we need that confirmation as soon as possible. I think by end of May, you should know whether uh, you are going to be in the six hour or three hour program. Because what happens, the June holidays gives us time to work on, on the routes and uh, on other logistic matters. The problem will be once you confirm to be in the six hour program, you cannot revert to a three hour program because please understand the bus seat for the three hour program will be given up to another child. The class vacancy seat will be given up to another child because uh, if we have more children going for the six hour program then less children in the three hour program, it means that we'll, we will shrink the three hour classes so that it's more um, you know, feasible. So like now if you have three K2 three hour classes, it may just become two K2 three hour classes. So then children cannot be shifted back and front, you know, because it, it, it's difficult. It's in, almost impossible. So we had some issues this year as well. I'll be very honest with you. Some parents felt that the six hour program was too much for the child because the child was initially crying. So I don't want to go to school. You know, it's, it's too tiring. And they wanted to go back to a three hour program, but there was no place in the three hour program. I don't know place or they say change of session. Even change of session, there was no place in the three-hour program. So uh, with those kids, I personally will work with the kids and, and I work with the parents. And after one month or one and a half month, the kid is happy, laughing and just coming and enjoying the school. So sometimes they need time to also adjust to the changes, right? But we have limited place. And the same thing for six-hour program. We don't do over um, enroll children in a six-hour program packed like sardines, you know, and, and, and the teacher has got such a big class to, to control. So we also would like to keep our uh, enrollment in the six-hour program manageable so that children are also have that one-to-one -one individualized uh, coaching as well. If not, it's just going to be six hours of full of children in one class. So we space out all that and we make a decision and then we tell you, please confirm. Once you confirm, chances of reverting is very slim. Right. Uh, pick up from Coven also. I'm not sure. I think Coven, yeah, it's it's in Strangwon. Uh, pick up from Co. I need to check. So you indicate your interest first, and then um, let me check with the admin. Is there a two way transport? So not to worry me. If you express an interest now, does that mean I cannot go back to three hour program? Yes. Now it's okay. It's only an expression of interest. Now is the period that you can just indicate your interest. There's, yes, I'm interested in six hour program. But only if I got two way transport. If not, you know, I cannot. There's no one to bring my children, or I can do one way, or I'm fine with no, um, um, you know, transport. So you indicate all your preferences, and then we close this. I think by twenty fourth of May we close this uh, registration. Then we will, after twenty fourth May, we'll send you the uh, confirmation that hey, you have been selected for a six hour program. We we can accommodate your child for six hour program. Are you interest, still interested? Please confirm and let us know. Then you let us know. Can we know what if someone needs to change from three hours? Oh, yeah. So I already addressed the three hour to six hour. So you need to think about it. Yeah, you need to know your child. You really need to know your child's needs and talk to your children and find out is six hour program. Can your child cope in a six hour program? Uh, is a child ready for that? And then you have to um, make the decision because you should, you as a parent will know better about your child than us. But like I said, sometimes we over pamper our children or over underestimate our children. They can thrive in a, even in a difficult uh, environment. They build the resilience and they learn to thrive. That is most important. Can we know the monthly, quarterly school trip schedule, which is more frequent? Uh, right now, I cannot, because you know why? I cannot tell you which field trips they're going to go to. It's governed by the projects they are doing for that year or for that term, right? So next next year, the, the, the subjects, uh, the projects might be different. Like this term, they're learning about bridges, like what Mitchell's mother said. So we are taking a trip to look at the bridges in Singapore. And we have very interesting bridges in Singapore. So there's a secondary uh, field trip that goes to um, uh, where the children are brought to look at bridges. 
So, but when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, the schedule we cannot share with you until next year, as when it happens. Yeah, so if your child doesn't feel comfortable, you're not able to move to three-hour programs. So we, we strongly encourage parents to think about it. Two-way transport to Strangwon. Usually Strangwon two-way transport is not a problem because it's very near. Should be able to, but please indicate your interest and we will get back to you. Yeah, I'm always looking for two-way routes that we can we add more routes, but uh, the they must have the fleet of buses, right? I mean, so the operator is also trying to slowly upgrade and get his fleet um, so we may add more um, seats, but then there must be enough children in that particular area to bring in as well. He can't ride the bus and pay for a bus auntie as well. And, and in fact, just two children from, say, uh, from Ishun. So the bus must be full, to and fro must be full. Then they will say, yes, I can afford to get send a bus. You know, they cannot afford. If they cannot afford, that's when the, the, the bus fees will go skyrocketing. So we want to keep it at a very feasible rate as well. So we control this. No, we are kindergarten, so there's no childcare subsidy involved. Is that two-way transfer to Sambawang? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm very, very sad to say we don't have uh, two-way transport to Sambawang. Uh, yes, Perinaigi will do very well in a six-hour program. Uh, we have seen her grow. I'm so sorry. At this point of time, there's no way Sambuang we can make it in the morning and uh, afternoon. Afternoon drop off should not be a problem, but morning pick up from your place is is I think is almost impossible. Is there a specific number of students set aside? Like I say, it's one even if it's one class, you will go ahead because it's just uh, still in the pilot stage. So we need to have at least one class of uh, six hour program. We'll go ahead with that. So that group of children will will still get to be enrolled. And the others will just stick to the three hour program. Extracurricular activities like dance, singing, etc., in the six hour program. Uh, we don't focus on extracurricular activities because you know some children like dancing, some children don't like dancing. Some like singing, some doesn't like singing. Some like to work uh, on in, in solitary play. So we do what is feasible in the six hour and not tax them just like go for dance class. Uh, go for um, you know uh, things that are not integrated. We try and integrate everything so that the children don't feel that I'm being asked to do something that I'm not I do not like. So extracurricular activities, perhaps if you're interested in those art forms, uh, the, the the performance arts, maybe you want to enroll your kid in uh, during the weekends. But let me tell you something. Eh? After a six hour program in the school, you cannot enroll your child in tuition or. Uh, I can read whatever other programs that you have for the weekdays. It's too much for the children. When I actually ask the parents, current parents, uh, the six hour program parents, so does your child still go for enrichment classes? They say, no, there's no need for it. Uh, they do not need, but if the child has got a special interest in, in chess or, or some other uh, specialized games or performance arts, then they give the child exposure. That is the way it should be. We don't have to keep pushing them for tuition or other things during the weekdays. Any change in transport cost? I cannot predict transport cost because uh, it really depends on the operator and us having discussion and the operating cost. Uh, bus drivers, diesel and, and aunties are very difficult. Bus attendants are very difficult to find nowadays. It is a dying trade, you know. Nobody wants to become a bus driver or um, bus attendants. Sooner or later, I'm not even sure bus transports will be provided in Singapore for uh, childcare or kindergartens. Very few kindergartens left. And so uh, the operators prefer taking international schools where the money is good. Uh, they pay a lot more or they go to schools which um, like primary schools or secondary school where there are a lot of government subsidies for the bus transport. So very few takers for um, private kindergarten transport. Yeah, the three-hour program still be there. Morning session, afternoon session, it still be there. There's no nap time in the six-hour program. And because if the child sleeps, the child misses out the other activities. And not all children, I mean, we don't believe all children can sleep at the same time and wake up at the same time, right? So that's more for childcare setting. But like we said, we have quiet time. 
And in the quiet time, if the child chooses not to work on his own uh, learning center, the child can also go and rest. Uh, and this when I say quiet time is times where they play in the learning center, they can even lie down on the uh, mat and play with the learning centers. It's not on the table and chair and you've got to sit there and, and, and do your work. Uh, we give children time to move, get up, sit on the floor, go to the library, the air condition is on in the, in the afternoon, uh, sit on the mats. You can lie down and read a book. You can talk to your friends. You can do work on the uh, uh, learning centers. So it's very manageable. Your child does not need a nap during that time. But if you want to, the teachers will automatically say, okay, you go to this corner and the teacher has to be there to monitor. So pillows are given, the child can rest. I'm just going through. Uh, understand, but on the non-English language, yes, so mother tongue languages do get more time. It's already explained. Will there be overlapping sessions between the three hour students and six hour students? Uh, no, overlapping sessions. Uh, I don't really get what you mean, but uh, do they interact with the three hour children? Yes, they do interact with the three hour children. Um, but other than interacting with them, there is no overlapping other kind of sessions. I'm not sure uh, what you're actually asking. Can we pack lunch or snacks for the kids? We, yes, what, what teacher Lakshmi say, we do not encourage because lunch is 12.30, you no? Know, if you pack, it's around 7 o'clock, you're going to pack lunch. How fresh can that be? Uh, morning snack, that's why we say we encourage fruits um, and let the children enjoy our snack. Our lunch is also catered specially for the six-hour program. It only arrives in school at about 10.50 to 11 o'clock. So it's very fresh for the children. So we prefer uh, children to bring uh, not to bring their own food. Yes, after lunchtime, not immediately after lunchtime, but they do get to do like, quieter activities after lunchtime. Is it during self-reflection time for 60 minutes that was mentioned? Uh, during Is it during self-reflection time for 60 minutes that was mentioned? No, uh, 60 minutes, uh, no. I think brain gym is it? Brain gym is done every day in the morning. Now we are doing um, about 15 minutes, 15, one, five minutes. Um, probably we want to extend this about 20 minutes because we want to include breathing exercises as well. So uh, we teach how to breathe. A little bit of yoga as well is involved. So we will teach children how to control their breathing. And so we are trying to see with next year, we can push it to 20 minutes and get children to do a little more of this training of uh, controlled breathing techniques and then uh, ranging. No extracurricular classes, sorry. Six hour classes are all separate classes, thank you. Uh, ladies can just scan through and just let me know if there's something that I need to address. Is it faster that way? Bus transport is only uh, based on availability. Uh, if there's a vacancy, you can always request. And if there's a vacancy, uh, our admin, <clears throat> Lavanya or Arti will tell you there's a vacancy. Chances are there may not be vacancies at the middle of the year. What is the last day to vote for six hours? I like the question. Well, vote for six hours and what is the program if we miss to work? Uh, we will also be blasting this to all the other parents who are not able to join us today. Um, so we are expecting more parents to respond. Um, before you respond, just, just take a look at... I think Teacher Kala can start showing the... Um, uh, Ida, show the uh, QR code so they can go in and if there's any question, they can ask us now itself. So this is the QR code the ex uh, for expression of interest. You can scan and fill up the form. Um, like I said, uh, uh, for now, we only can afford maybe maximum two classes next year. If there's overwhelming response, we may have to tell you, sorry, you know, uh, it's not possible. So in a way, it's also first come, first served based on the transport as well, okay? And then, uh, so all those who came today and who indicate their interest are the people who get the first priority. And then when we blast this on Monday, the other parents will get to see it. So uh, it's all timeline. So we, we, we need to control certain ways. So that's what we can do right now. 
uh, okay, to improve your skills. Oh, I understand the new enhanced curriculum. I want to know more about your skills like reading, writing, mathematics. I heard one, P1, 2, and 3 having tough syllabus in schools. They are having tough syllabus in school because expectations in primary schools are higher. But it's also how the children cope with the changing environment. You cannot pre-teach or over-teach your child in these subjects. Then your child forever will be subject-based. Right? He may do well in reading. And might not do well in writing and might do well in reading. But wouldn't we want our children to be holistically developed and able to learn on their own? Learn to learn on their own. That is the most important thing. And that way you can throw any mathematical sum. Child can have the resilience, the focus, and the thinking skills to work through the problem sum and answer. You can't teach by rote learning. Like I mentioned just now, yes, we have extended activities for uh, language, extended activities for numeracy currently. Numeracy extension, um, if it requires us, uh, doesn't mean because we need to do it, we, have to, we will do it. Like odd and even numbers are a very simple concept in math. I don't believe my teachers are doing another extra one hour because it's another one hour of math lesson on odd and even. So I would prefer they use that time uh, very constructively to do other activities. Whereas language is a very big scope. There's phonics, there is vocabulary, there is sentence structure, writing skills, listening skills, expressive skills. So there's a lot more we can do in the language department, whether it's mother tongue or uh, English language, than in the math department. In the math, what we would like to look at is do children have the ability to understand how the concept is being taught and apply it? Application is more important. Resting time, like I say, every uh, in, in five days, at least four days, we have this learning center time, which is what we call the quiet time, the learning center time, and the resting time. So it's only if the child wants to, from our experience, trust me, you can even ask your child after your enroll, does he rest in school? He will not, or she will not. But it's okay. If the child falls asleep, it's okay. Sometimes we fall asleep in the world as well. <laughs> so, ch child falls asleep is okay. I have seen teachers carrying the child to the office because the child, teacher maybe has to go for outdoor and uh, they come and place the child in uh, the class child in the office and uh, with blanket and then with a the pillow and the child sleeps. But this is more nursery children. Yet to see one K2 child who wants to come and sleep. Right. Yes, please do take a time to think through. The latest date to enroll will be 24th of May. After that, we need to con uh, work on the logistics. We don't uh, like to share timetables because we are not governed by timetables in our life. So our children should not be doing that and parents should not say, uh, you know, what do you do this time and what do you do the next time? Uh, the next period, next period. It's not by periods because all the while we've been like that, you see. Uh, even when we were growing up, First period is this, second period must do this, third period, ayo, it becomes very difficult to breathe. So let's not be caught up with timetables. Let's ask the child, how was your day today in the six-hour program? What is something that you learned that was interesting? Did you do something? Or what was challenging? Like how Mitten goes back and shares about bridges, I have to build bridges. I'm sure the teacher tell him to go back home and build your own bridge. But to explore bridges, that's what we have said. Go back home, talk to your parents about bridges. Then we expect parents to get onto uh, technology, use the Google, use um, books to show, hey, look, there are other kinds of bridges in the world. Look at this, look at that. Get them interested. Increase their curiosity level. That is learning. So timetable, no, no timetable be shared. Abacus, no, it doesn't, uh, it's too early and it's not relevant nowadays. Abacus, you know, I've known long time ago we used to put Abacus. Now, how many classes, for the sake of learning, they learn the backers, but are they applying in anywhere else in their life? I, I don't really think so. Now, chat GPT and, and uh, whatever AI, I think it's more important that children get to know all this AI, but not in kindergarten. When the time is right, they should know more about AI. Field trips, like you say, is governed by the projects and by the collaboration with elder care right now. So we will not able to tell you that every term you go for two. We're not, we're not fixed like that. 
we go according to children's needs and availability of the uh, places of interest. So they do get their, their basic uh, one trip per term. On top of that, what, uh, what where else can they go? What else can they do? We see it only when we are doing the curriculum or something happens in Singapore that's current interest, then we will plan for it. Okay, that is the last question I can see there. Are we all okay? Yes, girls, okay. So parents, it's 11.08. If there are no more questions, you can um, scan and uh, express your interests. Share this um, town hall with your other K1 uh, parents and see how is uh, what they say. But each child is different. So you need to think about whether it's what you want for your child and whether your child will be able to cope. But sometimes you might need extra information on whether your child can cope with the, the rigor of a six hour program. Please feel free to drop a dojo line to the teachers because the next person you can check in with will be the teachers who are spending time with your child every day. The teachers can give you a very frank, honest opinion on how your child can cope or is there something that the parents have to do now in order to get the child ready for a six-hour program? It's a lot depends on partnership as well. Uh, like what Middle Mom said, um, though we do a six-hour program, but we need the parents' help at home. You need to be constantly connected with your child to know what his needs are and then to work with the child. You know, a child will feel like, you know, um, only one side is, is doing the learning, the teaching part. So we need to work together. I cannot comment anything about transport right now. You know, uh, be crucified because <laughs> I really don't know about the uh, routes. But um, we are looking at if there are a group of children in uh, a certain area to make a bus, like a mini bus. No, at least we need eight to ten children in, in if it's a bus. Then I can uh, talk and talk and talk again and again and again to the operator and convince him to please help me one more year. Can you do this? That kind of things we have to do. So uh, you indicate your interest, I will do my best. We will really do what we can to accommodate your request. The QR code can we share later? Kala, is it possible to share uh, later? Can, right? Okay, yes, Kala's... yes, we can, we can. Okay, so uh, uh, expect a, a, a blast from Kala, she will put it up and you can indicate, you may want to discuss with your spouse and then uh, maybe with the children as well. I, I'm not sure whether the children are uh, ready to understand how the six-hour program is being conducted. They don't get to see the current K2s because they are very much involved in the three-hour program, the K1. So they don't get to see what the K2s are doing. Um, so they may not know what the six hours. They'll just say, oh, longer hours in school. I don't want, <laughs> you know, uh, or I'm, I'm worried. So rest assured, our teachers are all equipped and trained. It's ongoing training. We train our teachers to handle a six-hour curriculum differently. And uh, as we learn, we get ourselves better and we provide what we can, the best that we can for our children. So thank you so much, parents, for joining us today. I will let you go now. Um, we hope to get your uh, response soon so that we can start finalizing. We can't work on it until we get at least 50% of the class ready. Then we start finalizing and we'll get back to you You'll, ex you'll be expect uh, getting an email or uh, no to the portal I think yes, it's through the portal you'll be getting a letter uh, more details and whatever your request was we will put it in and then we'll ask you to confirm all right so either from me or from uh, the admin you will get a letter from us right thank you so much uh, have a great weekend it's still raining cats and dogs here uh, I hope everything's well there have a good weekend with your children I will see all the children on Monday. Thank you and bye-bye.